So cross compiling temporary tools, you can see these are all uh, fairly basic standard utilities that you'll get on most systems. Um, they're really part of the core of a Linux system and certainly the minimum what we need to create uh, a Linux system in the coming chapters. So nothing changes now, we're just building a different part of the system. We've built a cross court tool chain and these are cross compiling tools to go along with that, that tool chain. And we just do the same process as before. We extract the package. So in this case, it's M4. Change into the directory and just run the commands in as they appear in the book. And obviously this is an educational distribution. So it's not about just copying and pasting like I'm doing, which is just for demonstration, but it's also about reading about the package and what it does. Um, obviously, that's quite a brief description if you want to learn more. Um, there's more details here, or you, indeed you can go on the internet and learn more about what M4 is all about. So that's built just install it with that command there and that's done and a lot of these uh, support tools are smaller so there's quite a bit of typing and copying and pasting to get through and it take a few minutes to build so end curses extract it change into the directory there's a set command here to change make a slight alteration and then we've got all these commands here to run in. Again, theoretically, it should be typed in one after the other. Um, but I think it would be quite noticeable if this failed. One of these commands here. Yep, that's finished OK. So now we can run the real configure command. And build the package. It's done, so we just install it. Another additional command. There's a few more. There's generally with some of the packages, there's these other commands where they move things around, either as part of the configuration or to adhere to one of the standards that the LFS book follows. So that's finished remove the end curses directory and we can move on to the next package which is bash and you can see the repetitive nature of this now it's a case of extract the package change into the directory run a configure run the make to build it run the install maybe some other configuration and then go back to the sources and remove the directory. All slightly different. There's only one or two that have got similar instructions or identical instructions. So it's important to follow what's, what the instructions are on each package. As they're not all the same. So that's bash done. Move on to core utils. Okay, so once again, this is ambiguous. Press tab, you can see it's got a patch file, so that's all right. 
just put the dot in for the rest of the package and I can run the configure Build it. And run the install command. And then we've got several commands here to move files around. So just run them, check the output, it's working, renamed. No errors again, that's fine. Yeah, let's say if you ran this all in one go, it would just scroll off the screen, it would be harder and more error prone, I think, to follow whether or to see whether that command had ran, run correctly or not. Now, these instructions here you can see have gone out the side of the box, that's just because the web browser is a bit too narrow which is what I was afraid of, at least it's not gone off the edge of the page. But yeah, that's Core Utils done. So now I go to Diff Utils. Configure command. and make to build it. And install it. And that's that done. So now we go on to file. And we've got, uh, looks like a build, this is new, this is, uh, file command on a build host needs to be the same version as one we were building in order to create the signature file so what we're doing here is I'll run these commands one at a time it's uh, the file commands being built and it looks like it's yeah it's been built so that it's used for the build for the tools that we're creating So make and pop D back to where we were. Now we build it for the temporary tool system. And it's compiled there and installed. I think this file compiler is telling it which file to use while it's building it. A bit of oh right, they're just warnings, okay. So that's complete. And we move on to find utils. So again, configure command. make to build it or compile it yeah build it compile it and install it and then we've just got a few other operations here to do at the end and that's complete
So we build cork. So configure again. Build it and install it. It's done. So the next package we've got is grep. Again, this is fairly straightforward configure. There are subtle differences between most of these ones that look similar. I think there may be one or two that are identical, but um, other than that, there's virtually every package has got different instructions. So I build this. and install it, and it's done. So now the next one we've got is GSIP. And we've got configure again. Build it and install it. And just one file gets moved, and that's complete. And the next package we move on to is make. And configure again. Compile it and install. So move on to the next package, which is patch. Again, it's configure, make, install. Build it and install it, and it's complete. So now we go on to said, extract it, change into the directory, and again configure make install. It's built so we can install it now and that's done and we'll go on to tar and configure it Okay, that's configured. We can compile the package with make. And now we install it, and that's done. So now we go on to XZ.
Cigarette. <clears throat> Configured, build it with make. And we'll install it and we've just got some supplementary commands to run here. Move a few files around and create a sim link for the looks of it. And that's done. So now we move on to bin utils. The second time we run bin utils, again, like I said, when you extract the package, if you don't get that tar xz come up straight away, it means you've left the source directory behind. So you need to make sure you delete it before you actually extract the tarball. Make the build directory, change into it and run the configure and now we can run the make command That's done, so we can install it. And one of the other command here. That's finished. So back up two directories because we had a build directory and remove the source directory. And now we move on to GCC pass two. So again we extract the tarball first change into it and then we've got these other packages which need to be extracted inside the GCC directory and renamed There's this case, again, if you're on 32 bit, you can run this command, it just won't do anything. There's no harm if you do run it. But for 64 bit, it's definitely something you need to run. So we've got another build directory. There's a sim link that looks right here, and it's be created for POSIX thread support. And then we've got another huge config command and finally we can build the package
Right, that's finished compiling, so run the install command. And a symlink to CC, and that's built. So that's done, so now we enter the troop in the next section and build just a few more temporary tools.